So this was going to be kind of bread and butter of urethelial carcinoma uh, and assessing bladder, bladder in general. So first of all, in terms of normal urethelium, um, don't basically use the term mild dysplasia at all in your bladder biopsies. Any mild staining fixation alterations can, you know, it can cause something to look like mild dysplasia. The distinction of normal versus mild dysplasia is extremely subjective and uh, I think impossible to tell. And once you start using mild dysplasia with any great frequency, uh, clinicians will be desensitized when you truly have something that's dysplastic. So if you see something you're thinking of calling mild dysplasia, just call it normal. And what I basically do is I look at all my bladder biopsies using 10x objective. The 10x objective, if the urethelium looks small, doesn't stand out being overtly abnormal at 10x, I don't go to higher power. Because if you go to higher power, urethelium will always look funny and atypical, and you'll start overcalling it. We're going to jump all the way over to carcinoma in situ and come back to dysplasia afterwards. So CIS, you don't grade CIS. By definition, they're all high grade, even though there is a spectrum, as I'll show, of CIS from those that are more difficult to diagnose to those that are overtly CIS. Never in the bladder use the term, or, or anywhere in the urethelial tract, use the term severe urethelial dysplasia. It basically equals CIS, but from a clinician, if they see the term severe dysplasia, they may not treat it as CIS uh, and undertreat the patient. So basically, when you're talking about flat lesions, excluding reactive lesions that we'll talk about shortly, you have three choices. It's either normal or CIS, or it's something that's in the neoplastic sequence that doesn't make it up to CIS, and that's what we call dysplasia. So the histology of CIS is any malignant cells, regardless of quantity. So you don't apply the uterine cervical rules. You don't need to be full thickness. You can have an umbrella cell layer. You can see pagetoid cells. And as I'll show, we, you can have a spectrum of atypia. Something that we did many years ago, morpho, using a morphometry, but now you can just use it with eyeball, but I still find helpful, is Often, if you have normal urethelium and, let's say, CIS next to each other, that's how, it's easier to make the diagnosis. You say, oh, that's normal, this is not normal. The problem is when you have, it's either all abnormal or all normal, and you're trying to decide, is it CIS? So one thing that's very helpful that you always have in a bladder biopsy, you always have some stromal lymphocytes. Normal urethelial cells are about two to three times the size of a lymphocyte. Whereas CIS cells, if you look at the worst of the CIS cells in the case, they're going to be typically about five times the size of a lymphocyte, significantly larger. And that's why they jump out at low power. So I, I find that still helpful uh, in assessing a case that's not straightforward. Some CIS you'll see prominent nucleoli. More often, they're just large and dark nuclei without a lot of nucleoli. CIS cells tend to be very discohesive. That's why we get them on positive cytologies. And as I mentioned, you may see an umbrella cell layer.